Well, welcome to the bench. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be planting the great wheel into the uh, frames of the clock and give you an idea of what that looks like. See the great wheel is actually part of the fusi. And uh, there's your main spring barrel. We planted that one last time. So, let me give you an idea how it's going to, what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to make the great wheel first, and then we're going to make the uh, fusi. Uh, I've already done this. These are going to be very short. It's five minutes for the whole thing. Just as a recap to remember how we did it. Then we'll use some five-sided brooches and smoothing brooch, and we'll get it all planted in there, and we'll get the tilt right, and uh, uh, we'll get the shake right. And uh, that's pretty much what we're going to do now. But before we do that, let me talk a little bit about uh, what the purpose of the fusi is. Back when, way back when uh, they first started making spring-driven uh, clocks, they needed some way to keep the torque even throughout the uh, uh, the wind-up or the strength of the of the spring. For example, if you have a little toy car and you wind it up, it runs really fast at first. It starts to slow down, slow down, slow down, and then finally it stops. Well, same way today, uh, you don't find uh, the springs are much better today than they were before. Uh, plus, you have the adjustment on the uh, the pendulum, um, so you don't find uh, that many clocks with fusies in them right now. But this clock has a compound pendulum, which is a little bit different. You can't change the length of the pendulum in order to change uh, the uh, swing. So, in order to get the clock to run faster or to run slower you need to uh, uh, change the torque okay and so it's very important that you keep an even line here so that you keep the time even on this clock uh, this is done with a mathematical formula but when we finish it we're going to uh, put an adjusting bar on there and we'll actually make a little graph and we'll uh, adjust the uh, the grooves so that the uh, torque of the spring remains constant. We'll also be later we'll be adding stop works in there so that the spring uh, the cable between the sp the uh, main spring and the fusi uh, cannot get to the end and uh, uh, it, it stops before it gets to a point where it could get in break or f uh, fray the uh, cable running between the two. Uh, but that's done later in the build uh, after we've got the pendulum and the escapement in there. Uh, so for right now, let's just go ahead down into the shop and get started. Here's the beginning of our ratchet cut here. And there's the finished ratchet. Look at it. And now we're putting on a gear blank onto a super glue arbor and facing the front of it. Now that little spigot there in the front, that's going to be the arbor to put the uh, uh, ratchet on. So let's go ahead and check to make sure we got the right size and see what the fit looks like. There we go. So now we got the, the ratchet in place. Now we're going to use a Robert Porter's method and make a gear cutter. We need a gear cutter. We've formed the sides. Now we're cutting in our teeth with a slitting saw. And there's our final cutter after it's been hardened. And we now have the gear blank on the uh, super glue arbor being cut. Porter recommends that you make three passes to get to the final depth. So that's what we're doing here. We're on the third pass now. And here we are at the jig, the bandsaw, cutting out the click. And we're doing a little draw filing. Now we're working on the click spring. Get the click spring to size. Now the hammering over here gets it, shapes it, but not only does it shape it, it also gives it the spring that it needs. So now we're getting in our final blows here to get the spring into the shape and into the spring strength that we need to keep that clean. Now we're using uh, Wilder's uh, jig, uh, crossing out jig to cross out the wheel. And we're on the piercing saw now to cut those uh, sections out on the wheel. And of course, after cutting them out, we do a little filing and then a little bit of sanding. Now we're ready to get it so that we can get that fusi on there. Well, there's a big old piece of brass on a, a drill rod arbor ready to be made. 
into a fusi. And now we've got it between it, it, on the lathe and we're setting up the compound to cut that curve. We need to cut a curve. So it's a little bit different than your normal way of working. That bit needs to cut both in both directions. You really have to watch out not to heat up the uh, brass too much so that the Loctite is it's held on there with Loctite. You don't want that Loctite to let go. And now we're getting near, this is our final curve here, I think. Nice clean pass, clean it up really nice. Now this is the tool that I made, uh, it was designed by W.R. Smith for cutting the grooves into the fusi. And I'm using the back ears to slow it down and slowly cutting that continuous cut into the uh, to the brass and there it is and just cleaning it out now with a little bit of a file and next we use a piece of boxwood with some uh, dimatine fine extra fine dimatine and we're once again we're just polishing up those grooves a little bit and here's a look at the setup for uh, squaring off the uh, end of the arbor for to make it wind it. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't show you making the pivots, but now I'm getting the pivots all polished up here with these uh, uh, styrofoam back uh, sandpaper that I like so much. Puts a nice finish on the pivot. But we're going to burnish them, so... Uh, we're going to be using this as a uh, pivot, fi pivot file. It's a very, very, very fine file that gets into the corners. I've showed it to you before. And just bring it up a nice high polish. Now a little oil on it. And we come back. There you go. A little oil. And now we're burnishing. And this is the burnishing end of that file. And this hardens it up and gets it ready uh, for the next phase. So now we're drilling the hole that's going to put the, bring the cable in. And you can see I've got it on a little bit of a slant there so that it goes in nicely. Now we're, that little black line shows the drill hole I just made. And now we're drilling in there to put the stop so that the cable has room to put the stop in there. And use a drill bit here to see how we're doing. A little bit further down, I think. Yeah, there we go. There's a better look at it, too. Get that cable in there. And here you can see I've made a change in that I've put the ratchet right on the back of the fusi here so that we can ratchet it around and uh, uh, connect it directly to the great wheel. There we go. Now we need a... Uh, uh, a stop button uh, to put it all together. This will uh, lock the uh, great wheel onto the fusi. And once it gets in here and locks, there's that little hole over there is for a, a screw to hold it so that it can't move. All right, so uh, there we go. We've got the uh, uh, the fusi and the great wheel together. Alright, so there is our, our two plates and they're pinned and now we're marking uh, some dicum down here and we're going to mark the position of the center wheel. Normally uh, when you're planting the wheels you plant the center wheel first 
Okay, now I'm getting the center line, and I'm going on either side of the, uh, the pins there, so there'll be actually two center lines. Okay, so here's our second center line. And then after the second center line, you can see the two tangs coming out that hold the, uh, the dial on the clock. And in the center of the, the center wheel is in the center of the dial. So we're going to mark the center here, and that would be where our center wheel goes. And normally this is the where you'd start from your center wheel and work up and then work down. But because of the fact that the great wheel has such a big pivot and the hole is so uh, big, I decided to drill that one first and then work up to the center wheel from there. And this is W.R. Smith's depth ink tool that we'll be using. And you can see that there, the little one is the center wheel. I use my finger to put a little bit of tension on there, and then I'm adjusting it in. And I can feel it getting a little bit better with each turn. And then when I feel it that it's not getting better, then I stop and I can get an idea. I can look down at the end of my uh, tool and see where I am. All right, yeah. All right, that's feeling a little rougher there. So we're at about 10 o'clock, so at about 9 o'clock is the prime position. I'll do this a couple of times before I actually go back to the plates. But here we are at the plates, putting the center wheel, marking the center wheel, and then just scribing a line for the great wheel there. All right, so now we're ready to start drilling. And set the wiggler up. And there's a the center drill. And we'll drill through it once, and I think twice. And there's the second drill. We're still well undersized at this point, but we'll take it over to the bench. And this is a five-sided brooch. It's a clockmaker's brooch. I don't believe that many people, I think clockmakers are about the only people that use them. But it cuts in both directions. And I'm opening the hole up. It's got a slight taper to it. And the taper to the uh, five-sided brooch and the smoothing brooch is the same taper. Uh, but unlike when you're opening up a uh, uh, a hole for a, uh, f for a bushing, this one you open from both sides, not from just the inside. So now I'm making the hole, getting the hole to the size that I like. It cuts so fast that I, you go slow. I've got this speeded up just a little bit, uh, but this is something you do slow, and you keep matching it up here. Once you get to, the, you get the feel for the pivot there, then you leave the. Uh, uh, the five-sided brooch and go to the smoothing brooch but for right now I'm still opening the hole just a little bit more and here's the uh, smoothing brooch and uh, it's it smooths out the polishes up the hole for you it actually burnishes it uh, to some degree um, and it's uh, very well oiled, the same way you would with the burnishing when you're burnishing a pivot. Uh, you don't use oil with the cutting brooch, but with the, uh, uh, the smoothing brooch, I use plenty of oil. And once again, I'm trying to keep both sides together. Now, once you're done and you've got it through there, you're looking for that five degree tilt there. There you go. You can see I got about five degrees of tilt in there. And that's what you're looking for from your hole. All right, so now I put the plates in there, and I'm just spinning this a little bit here. But what we're looking for now is the shake. All right, so there you go. Now there's your shake there, and the shake looks real good. All right, now well, there's the, uh, the finished great wheel and the fusee mounted in the clock. Now on our next video we'll be taking the center wheel and we'll be mounting the center wheel like that and uh, we may do the third wheel at the same time but 
I'm not sure yet. But if you want to see the video on how these wheels were made, uh, it's already out there. And if you, the lantern pinions, there's a video on how to make how I made the lantern pinions as well. But the next video, I will have a little brief recap at the beginning of how the wheel was made and how the lantern pinion was made, and then we'll get into planting the train. All right. Well, thank you all for stopping by. I really appreciate it, and I hope I'll see you again.